Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Heading out fishing, beautiful day. A little bit windy. That don't bother me none, baby. The GG don't care. But here's what we're gonna do today. We're talking about focus. I own a Sleep at the Reel. Great channel, by the way. Uh, great American veteran. His intro is amazing. You need to watch it. If you don't watch it for nothing but the intro, it's worth it. It's that good. Um, live footage of him in Afghanistan. How cool is that? But he brought something up, focus. And it's an adjustment that very few people pay attention to. I've never heard a Garmin uh, customer service or engineer refer to this, but it's on there. I think it's auto fresh, auto salt, and then you up and down. And I watched his video and it got me to thinking, um, what this does is it focuses the rays, not focus in terms of more or less alignment of the rays. Have you ever looked at the bottom of your screen and you see like a portion of a ray and then the next one is above or below it? That means your focus is off. Now, when I got to thinking about it, if one is above or below, that's causing the rays to not, when they're not aligned, you're not getting the purest picture you can get. You're always going to have stitching until they can come up with one ray that covers 135 degrees or whatever they decide. And I don't believe they could go less than 135 after having this one 135. Until they can come up with that, and that's never been happened so far, even in x-ray and the sonography part of it, they're going to have stitching. So you have to figure out if they're not aligned, then they're possibly crossing over, which is going to cause interference because the rays are actually hitting into each other so being that they're hitting into each other you're going to have slight cross talk and we're not talking about a bunch but at this point in time we're trying to fine tune it so you got some cross talk that cross talk is going to uh, equate into more of a ghost tree effect because two returns hitting each other that's where the hitting that hard bottom together bouncing at the wrong angles so let's get into this video take a look at it I think you'll find it interesting and I found personally that I was still able to see the ghost tree you'll see that but what I saw was in the areas of stitching no voids or the decree the the uh, the, the going away of a voids a little bit we, we try to decrease it as much as we can so let's get into this I know that was a long intro but I think it's very important that we understand what we're trying to do today okay guys first thing I want to know to, want you to notice and to understand is this is a fine tuning of the process. As I'm on zero, take a look at that bush. You notice how the right side, which is right on a, uh, a beam, it's right on a stitching area. Notice how it fades away as the bush goes through there, okay? And that is because the beams are not focused. They're actually overlaying. Now watch as I come up into the 140 range and I go higher. Now I'm going all the way to the top. Now I'm going to the other extreme. See, when I go down to zero, see the see the voids? I go up to 255, you got some voids because I've tilted the beams the other way. But when I notice when I get to 145, is there a little a uh, little bit of uh is there a little bit of fading? Yes, there is a little bit of fading, but there is no disappearance of the voids. Now, let me explain to you this also. 145 is the number for my transducer. Okay, that is not your transducer. That is going, you're going to have to find that optimal number. But notice as we cross these beam stitches that there's not the huge voids. There is some fading, and that is just due to the nature of the beast of uh, sonography and how it works. You're never going to be able to stitch up beams that perfectly. But you notice right here, look at that, that bush. You notice you can still see the beam stitch, but there's no void and that is a big deal now um, I'm gonna go through it again and kind of show you in uh, and, and just kind of reiterate my point here and, and I know I feel like I'm going over but I want you to pay attention to the bottom look at the bottom actually tilt now you see how there's the beam stitch on the bottom now look at it tilt up what you're doing is you're tilting rays you're tilting and adjusting the alignment of rays now the bottom just shows you what's happening, but the bush, notice that bush. See how it went to zero and see how that right side of that bush went away? 
and now at 47, that right side is mighty faint. It almost feels like you're twisting as you look. It looks like the bush is twisting, and that's not the bush twisting. That is the actual bush. Now you see, yes, we get a little fading there, and that is a stitching problem. That has been fixed a whole lot on the new transducer, but what you don't have is the huge voids. And I'm going to tell you right now, get into your focus. Get in there. Play with it. Find you a brush top or a tree. See how I went on zero and it looked like the bush turned? I hate to cut myself off. Now, as I go back down, you'll find that sweet spot, which I believe on mine is about 145. Uh, it may be a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Um, but look at there. Right? They're right, I'm right on a beam stitch. I'm right on a beam stitch. And there's no disappearance of the tree. And I think that's very important. That's in the lower water cup. Now we're crossing, look at it, crossing into that beam right below the boat. Yes, you can see this the beam, but it's not disappearing and causing the voids. I hope this helps, guys. This is a fine-tuned process right here. Thank you so much. So, guys, what do you think? Uh, after seeing that, if that doesn't allow, uh, allow you or make you want to go in there to adjust that um, and to get that better picture, because like I said, we're at the ceiling of the LVS-32. Every fine little detail that we can do to get that best possible picture is what we need to do. And after doing some testing um, of some older, pro, uh, older software and the newer software, my suspicions were um, they, they were kind of, you know, confirmed that I don't think the older software was quite as good as we believe it was. And I don't believe the new one is quite as bad. I believe what's happened is the newer software is a little bit more uh, it's a little bit you got you got to go into it a little bit more there's a little bit more to it so it takes more fine-tuning and adjustment some people don't like that heck I like it to be just set it on 68 80% color gain you know lower medium uh, noise reduction low TBG call it a day that's what the old software was and you pretty much never moved it uh, the new one not like that a little bit more uh intricate and by having to move it more you, you got a lot more fine and, and it's, it's a little bit harder to dial in and that is where also storing those lake presets becomes a valuable valuable tool and it's very important the new software i think what's happened as we've reached that ceiling of of the lvs 32 there's a trade-off you, you got to give a little bit to get a little bit. And I think so many people kind of complained about the cloudiness of the engine or the the, uh, the, engine, the, the image and the uh, being able to see the artifact in the water. So they cleared up the screen. But when you clear up the screen, you give away a little bit of that slight detail. So I think you need to ask yourself, you know, is updating in the best of my interest? And I do believe Garmin should have relayed that a little bit more than maybe you know this this update may not be for you and so uh that is on them but I, I garmin ain't listening to me okay garmin needs to but they ain't listening to me but guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and remember hit the bell